Hello, I'm Kate Peck and welcome to the penultimate round of the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championship presented by Motul. And we are back at arguably the greatest racetrack on the planet, Phillip Island. It's been a few months between rounds and we are all chomping at the bit to go racing. And I'm thinking this championship battle is about to serve up some gold here. Oh, absolutely. I mean, what a year we've had so far. I mean, for me, it's been a year of three parts. I mean, Josh Waters looked like he was going to run away with the championship at the start of the year. And then Troy Herfoss, what a fight back he had. But we come here and it's another animal again. Yeah, well, let's wind it back to Morgan Park round five, where it was game on. We saw the most intense battle between Troy Herfoss and Mike Jones. Oh, incredible stuff. I mean, Mike Jones looked like he was going to win a couple of races up there, but you cannot beat Troy Herfoss at a track like that. He was an animal, and uh, once again, for the last two years in a row, Mike Jones lost a race up there 100 metres from the finish line. And it has been a bit of a bumpy break in the season for our front runners. Troy Herfoss on the Honda has arrived at Phillip Island with some new silverware. Yeah, he certainly has. Um, unfortunately for him, he was going to make a, a debut in the Pro MX Championship, but uh, he had a crash on his 450 Honda and uh, had to get an operation and get a plate on his collarbone. But on top of that, he had uh, broken ribs uh, and also a bruised heart. So a lot to come back from. And of course, McMartin racing with K-Tech Josh Waters uh, ran into a little bit of trouble at Suzuka. Yeah, well, he was off riding in Japan and uh, got taken out by another rider. Not his fault at all. And unfortunately for him, he broke his wrist. And to be honest, uh, that is a bit of a question mark. All right, well, let's take a look at the championship points, Steve. Penrite Honda's Troy Herfoss is in the lead as we arrive at Phillip Island with a 14-point buffer. Nibbling at his heels is Josh Waters on the Ducati, who will be so hard to beat at this track. And coming in third is Mike Jones from YRT. And we can only pray for some more Morgan Park style, that style battles with Herfoss for this round. So, Steve, let's take a look at the pole sitter because Desmo Sport Ducati's Brock Pearson took his first ever pole. It was an incredible lap. And with his performance at Morgan Park, it really seems like things are clicking for Brock and the team. Absolutely. Cast your mind back a few months at Morgan Park. He got a podium. And what's he done? That's made him hungry. And he's fought for it. And boy, what a lap he put in. The conditions were a bit tricky yesterday, but he put in the lap of his life and put it on pole, and that bodes well for today. Well, let's take a look at the Honda track preview with yourself and Troy Herfoss. This week's Honda track preview is a real special one. We're back at Phillip Island, a track that all the racers and fans love. And I know that you love this place too, Troy the most exhilarating track in the world. I can't wait to do a lap with you. Well, let's go and have a look and dissect this place. Troy, 300 kilometres an hour into turn one. Yeah, this corner is so much fun. Just picture three or four bikes coming into here at 300 k an hour into a corner that's hugely banked, lots of grip, you're out of the wind. Um, it's it's just fun. You can you can really open up the superbike. The superbike doesn't feel like a big powerful bike here because there's so much grip available. You can just get straight into that throttle and shoot up into turn two. Turn six, Dunlop Corner. We don't talk about it much, but it's a pretty important place. Exactly, Steve, and right where we stand here, this exact point, you have to be so careful with the throttle control. If you can't find grip here, you're gonna miss out on an opportunity to pass the last passing opportunity at MG Corner. There's a pretty good view out the back, too. Not bad on a day today, is it? Beautiful. Michelin Turn 11. The trend of the day, corners that we haven't talked about in the past. This is so important. It is, another corner where patience is key. You see people struggling through turn 12 and maybe lacking speed into the straight. It all comes from the momentum you carry from turn 11. If you're on a bike that doesn't drive out of 11, you're trying to chase your tail into turn 12 and leave yourself open for a run to the finish line to get past. You've got to get every corner right at Phillip Island to get a good lap time. Exactly, I think the key of the day is patience around Phillip Island. As a racer, Troy, where do you want to be leading this race on the last lap to win? I think, Steve, the secret's going to be to be in charge of the race, heading out MG into Turn 11. That way you give yourself the best chance possible to get that run to the finish line. Well, there you have it. 
patience and speed are the key to winning at Phillip Island. The 2023 Superbike Championship is heating up nicely. There's 102 points on the table and still five riders in with a mathematical chance of championship glory. Honda's Troy Herfoss leads the way with a tight 14 point lead over McMartin Racing's Josh Waters. I've been working two years for this since the accident. Um, it's taken a lot, of, a lot of hard work to get back to here. I've regained the championship lead. I've got that taste of winning and, and, um, and it feels so good to be back in charge of the championship. I just really, really want to get the job done this year. Waters is quietly confident heading into two of his favourite rounds, Phillip Island and The Bend. Yeah, so we've still got four races left in the championship. Um, obviously back here at Phillip Island, uh, a circuit I really enjoy riding the uh, McMartin race and Ducati on. So then we move to, to my home round, even though it's in a different state in um, Tail and Bend. So two circuits that I'm really looking forward to and I'm just going to go and enjoy it and whatever happens, happens. Try my hardest. There is a question mark over fitness though, with both riders carrying injuries since Morgan Park. I had a crash after Morgan Park round. Um, unfortunately, broke my collarbone. Um, I broke eight ribs, punctured lung, bruising on the heart. <laughs> It was, a, it was a bad, bad injury. Uh, luckily, the collarbone heals quickly, but unfortunately for me, we had a big break. Um, I come into this round 100%, but it, it was a, it was a, a pretty hard hit. Um, so fortunate to be here 100% fit and, and ready to fight again. In our, in our break, I was fortunate enough to do the Suzuka 8 hour for the, the tenth time it would have been in my career. Um, didn't go to plan. Uh, I was taken out in, uh, in qualifying and I did a bit of damage to myself. Um, it wasn't great that we had such a big break in the championship, but for me it was, I was kissed on the bum because it, I was able to, let's just say four weeks ago, I couldn't move my hand properly. So every day uh, that we have off is, is better and I'm getting stronger. Let's not forget current champ, Mike Jones, searching for his first win of the year. Yeah, look, this year's been certainly a trying year. Um, certainly some missed opportunities there for wins have been so, so close. Um, the battles with Troy Herfoss have been, you know, right down to the, the last lap and some of them the last turn. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty tough, honestly, to be able to, to, to have finished, um, you know, second place in, you know, six of the races. Uh, and, and missed out by like some of them a less less than a tenth of a second. But you know, from a points point of view for the championship, it's just um, yeah, really made it hard because uh, I needed to I needed to be able to win those races to bring myself back into the championship. But I've been losing and coming second, so at the end of the day, I'm uh, back in third place at the moment. Well, Halliday is still in with a shot. It's GT Racing's Glenn Allerton that is coming into form and hoping to upset the Apple Car. Yeah, I'm, I'm really confident heading into these last couple of races. Um, our, our team's been building momentum and, you know, the results that we've had uh, since they've had a couple of changes to the team, we've been on a podium basically in every race. So, but I, I'm pushing to try and get ourselves onto the top step. So the satisfaction for me is going to come from trying to get that bike up on top and winning some races. So, yeah, the last couple of races are going to be interesting. Always tough against this competition, but I think that the GT racing team's ready to go. Four wins from four starts in the Vic titles was great, but another four wins in the ASBK is what we really want. Let the games begin. Well, that championship battle is certainly heating up. Brock Pearson will be starting from pole position and joining him on the front row of the grid, the championship challengers Josh Waters and Mike Jones with uh, Troy Herfoss back on the second row of the grid in position number six. But Crew Halliday and Max Stouffer join him there on the second row. They absolutely do. Good to see Troy Herfoss there in that sixth position, starring Allerton and West. You wouldn't expect them to be that far back, but they are Collins, Metro and Kyoto on that row four. Yeah, great to see Mark Kyoto back. His first race lap since 
Nights here in February. On the fifth row of the grid, we've got Arthur CC's. Watch for him to be very fast off the start. Matt Walters, unfortunately, has had to pull out with some ECU uh, teething issues with the brand new machine. And Tom Taparas making his Superbike debut back on uh, that row of the grid. A great performance from Tom. Yeah, good to see Scott Lars and Michael Kemp there too. Yeah, Paris Hardwick, Jacob Hatch, uh, another rider coming back from overseas too. Jacob Hatch doing a good job on board uh, his machine, riding a superbike here for the first time as we get ready to go racing, Steve. See the clutch pulled in there for our pole sitter, Brock Pearson. Alpine Star Superbike is go. Great start from Josh Waters. He got the jump, he went past Brock Pearson as they made their way off the line and underneath the Melbourne Bridge. And as they make their way down towards turn one, it is still Josh Waters that has got a considerable lead over Max Stover, who's got an absolutely cracking start from the second row of the grid. He was looking to get a good start, and he's done exactly that. Crew Halliday has made his way up into third, and Mike Jones, who was in third coming into AWF corner, looks like he's now drifted back to about fifth. Yeah. But what about the start from Josh Waters and Max Stover? No, it's a brilliant uh, start. Exactly what Waters wanted to do, but Allerton's made the most of that too. He's put himself up into that fourth position. He was eighth on the grid. So he's had the best start of the bunch, I would say. Jones there in fifth. Um, and Herfoss, where is Herfoss? We haven't even mentioned him. He's back there. He's got a, a not a good start at all as Herfoss. He's got work to do. There he is back down in seventh position. Remember, the championship leader, Troy Herfoss and Mike Jones. This is what this one's all about. Well, Jones has actually got to try and get past his fellow Queenslander, Brock Pearson, the man that started from pole position, has gone uh, back to about fifth or sixth position as they make their way up towards Pirelli corner for the first time. It is Josh Waters that is really quite clearly trying to uh, make a break at the start of his field. He's got Max Stoker sitting in second position, but the one person they need to really keep an eye on is the man that has proven many, many times without taking a race win here. He is fast at Phillip Island, and that is Crew Halliday on board bike number 65, and Crew is dragging his teammate Mike Jones along for the ride as they come round through the final corner and out onto the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance start finish straight to complete lap one of the 12 lap journey. Yeah, absolutely. A great start there by Crew Halliday, who sits in that third position with Mike Jones just behind him at the moment. Uh, um, and uh, poor Brock Pearson from that pole position lost five spots on the first lap. But let's hope that he can settle himself down now. The, one, the thing they got to worry about is that man out front. Josh Waters has already got a couple of bike lengths on young Maxi Stauffer, who is doing an absolute fantastic job holding that second position at the moment. But I feel he's going to come under some pressure pretty soon. It looks like Mike Jones now has moved up to that third position as well, and he'll be putting pressure on Stauffer. Tries to dive up the inside, can't quite do it there. Remember, so far this year, it is six race wins for Josh Waters, six race wins for Troy Herfoss. And unfortunately, Mike Jones has a whole lot of second positions that he wants to rectify this weekend. And uh, at the moment, there he goes, up the inside of his teammate. Got that, it's uh, Jones up the inside of uh, Max Stouffer on board the GTR Motorstars machine bike number 27. Max doing a great job here. As he said, he just wants to get out there and learn with Australia's best, and that's exactly what he's doing at the moment. Sandwiched in between the two Yamaha racing team machines of Mike Jones and Crew Halliday. And if anything, they've dragged Jot Josh Waters back a fraction. There is an AMX replay of Jones going up the inside at Yamaha corner. Well, it was a battle between the Yamahas. Yeah, absolutely. Good move there by Mike Jones. Uh, pulled that off to perfection and used his strong point, uh, which is corner entry speed and smoothness. Good job by Mike Jones to move up into that position. But look at uh, Waters now. 32.3. Remembering the conditions are completely different to what they were in qualifying. Qualifying, it was... Uh, Blustery. There was a lot of wind today. Conditions are almost perfect. Yeah, and also, too, not a lot of data was gained by the teams on Friday, Steve, wasn't it? Because the uh, the track had been cleaned after MotoGP with all the uh, the mud and everything on it, and the riders were all saying there wasn't a lot of grip. And uh, Jones was pretty fast early on in the uh, in the day on Friday, so he's having a good weekend so far. The big question is, who has used what tyre? We know there are three options here for the Pirelli runners, which are most of the runners at the front of the field. As Herfoss looked like he got a little bit wide into Honda Corner well, so Herfoss, on that occasion. Herfoss has made his move on Pearson now, so he's in front of Pearson, uh, was starring behind Pearson now. Herfoss uh, will not like the fact that he can see Josh Waters and especially Mike Jones up the road at the moment. So, look, Herfoss has already put a little bit of a gap on Pearson as he makes his way up through Yamaha and comes to the top of the hill now at Ducati. And he'll drop down into a Pirelli corner. 
Waters has just managed to stabilise that uh, that surge from Mike Jones. Will be very interesting to see what they do because the first flying lap was Mike Jones at 32-210. What has Josh Waters been able to do? Top speeds nudging just over 300 kilometres an hour. Brock Pearson, 305. Troy Herf was 308 kilometres an hour as they got towards the, uh, the speed trap. I think that's also an indication of how far Troy Herf goes into that speed trap on the break before he gets... Uh, he might just stop for a turn one. Well, 32-5 for both of our front runners. There's only literally a couple of hundreds of a second between their lap times. And uh, Mike Jones... Oh, oh got one and it's Herfoss. Herfoss has run off into Turn 1. Exactly where he had an incident yesterday in yeah. qualifying. So he's now back behind after CC. So that will be back to about 11th position. That is your Herfoss. championship leader doing that. So this is going to have big implications for the championship. It certainly is. Remember, 14 points was the difference as they came into this race. Josh Waters behind. Troy Herfoss in the race for the 2023 My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championship presented by Motel Title. Yeah, but uh, straight up the inside there of uh, Arthur CC's for Troy Herfoss. He knows that he's got to just like uh, go into limitation mode at the moment. Try and get as many points as he can. Try and figure out why he keeps on running off that turn one. He had a crash there on the as we have a look on the AMX replay there in the background. It's uh, almost like he's been pushed into that corner. He's carrying a lot of speed. 308, uh, the highest speed of anybody out there, and uh, just missed his braking marker, or maybe he locked the front wheel earlier in that corner, had to let off the brake, and these guys are on the limit. Look at that point score. Herfoss and Waters, if it was to finish like this, equal points. That 14-point gap gone. Well, you would have to say that Troy Herfoss should get one more position because he's lapping about a second faster than Ted Collins, who is only half a second in front of him. But then it is a couple of seconds up the road to Ant West. And uh, catching up to Ant West and then overtaking him might be a far more difficult, uh, well, thing than trying to position. Get, uh, position to try to get past uh, Ted Collins, who's uh, only will ride in his eyesight and uh, lapping considerably faster. As we go back to our race leaders now, it is Josh Waters and Mike Jones. Jones just letting uh, Waters do all the donkey work, sitting right in his slipstream as they come up through Yamaha corner. The big question is, is Mike Jones going to risk trying to go past and then letting Josh Waters have the advantage of being able to sit behind him and look at the lines of the uh, the multiple Australian champion? The Can answer I answer that is it? Yes. I'll answer it. Yes, he is, because he feels he's got more mid-corner speed at the moment. Uh, and, uh, like, looking at the way he went into, uh, you know, the, the Hayshed corner before, the Yamaha corner, he literally had more mid-corner speed, more mid-corner grip. Perhaps it is the case that Waters is struggling a little bit with that, um, you know, that wrist issue. Even Crew Halliday, look at Crew Halliday. He is hanging in there and closing down the gap between the leading couple. I was just about to say, Crew Halliday is the one I'd be keeping my eye on because uh, on that last lap, he was the fastest rider in the top three with a 132.641. Jones was a 32.9 and Waters was a 33.4. Halliday is on the back of that group. Now, he hasn't had a win this year either. Well, coming into this weekend, we all knew who the favourites were for the race wins this weekend, but I said my biggest dark horse of the race win would have to be Crew Halliday and also Glenn Allerton. Allerton because of his performances here recently and Crew Halliday because all he's had this year when it's time for a race win has been... Halliday! As, as Waters is wide. Halliday's up the inside and closing in on the back of his teammate now. And once Crew Halliday gets up onto the back of Mike Jones, you can tell there's going to be no team orders there at uh, Yamaha Racing Team. It is everyone for themselves. Well, Halliday's not confirmed for next year yet, is he? So in the only thing going to be confirmed, seat. he's going to give this one a red-hot go. Absolutely. And he is good around this Phillip Island circuit as Crew Halliday. And he's proven that many, many times too, hasn't he? Yeah. So uh, his heart will be beating extra fast right now. Well, you know he's doing, been doing a lot of work. Even Crew Halliday's job that he does when he's not racing is a very physical job. So he's been getting a plenty of practice and uh, he's looking very fit as he came here to Phillip Island, his Crew Halliday, as we watch them now come out of Michelin Corner and round through uh, MA Corner and onto the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance, start, finish straight. Great time to go down to a pit lane and get an update from Kate. Yeah, just a tyre update. Um, so the three, four that I've talked to... Intermediate tyre, that's a good Mike Jones. Also, Waters and Troy Herfoss. Rob, thanks very much, Kate. The uh, A1126, I think it is, uh, Steve, that is the Phillip Island specific Pirelli tyre developed here with the World Superbike Championship.
Jones and Crew Halliday as they lead through the final corner and out onto the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance start finish straight to complete eight laps of this 12 lap journey. So we're getting down. Here's Halliday. Halliday's making a move up the down the straight now into modal corner. He's on the inside. He's gone past Jones. And remember, Crew Halliday was on a charge in the first round of the championship when unfortunately after CC's bike had a problem in front, Halliday had to run across the gravel trap and then uh, race to second race injured but still showed unbelievable pace. So Crew Halliday, could this be redemption for round one when it was all sorts of bad luck? It was bad luck at round two as well. He was charging towards Josh Waters and in chance for a race win when his teammate Mike Jones's bike was on fire at the, the side of the circuit and a red flag was called. Could it be Crew Halliday's first win since Morgan Park back in about 2017 on board a superbike? We've still got a long way to go, but he's shown us uh, what he's made and what he wants to do. Dives that uh, on the inside there of the Dunlop corner through the gearbox. Still looks like he's got plenty of grip. Did you notice the cheeky look over his shoulder as we have a look at the AMX Superstores replay there of Crew Halliday? Well, he didn't even seem to use the slipstream. He just seemed to pull out and blast on by Jones as they went down the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance start finish straight and into uh, Motor Corner turn one. What a great job there from Crew Halliday. But Jones is staying with him. This is not over yet, Steve. It's definitely not over yet. It is a lot easier to follow at this circuit than it is to lead. Um, but I feel that Halliday has got it in control at the moment. It's probably going to come down to the last lap because Jones will be watching that gap now back to uh, Josh Waters. And Josh Waters will be watching that gap back to Max Stauffer. You can see there, he's just sitting there at the moment. But also, too, Jones has quite looked to have a bit more of a wobble up and was a little bit more oh. upright coming onto the straight as Jones repays the favour. OK, I got that wrong. To his teammate, Crew Halliday, as they come down through Motel. If anything, the more that these guys do this, the more it's going to bring Josh Waters back into the equation. In fact, on the last lap, Josh Waters was the fastest rider in the top three, a 133-1 versus, uh, well, a high 133-1 for uh, Crew Halliday and a 133-2 for Mike Jones. Max Stouffer still sitting there in the 33s with a 33-9. Brian Starring is up to fifth place now, getting the better of Glenn Allison. Oh! That's Mike Jones is down. Jones is down at turn four. That puts Josh Waters up in the second place and Crew Halliday in the race lead. And Max Stouffer could be looking at his first podium in an Alpine Star Superbike category as Jones, can he get the bike started? Can he get round to complete this race? Well, there's a lot of turf hanging off the side of that one, so he's going to have to be careful if he does get it going back out on track there. Yellow flags on the entry up to uh, Ducati Corner or, or Yamaha and Ducati Corners as well, so I'm not sure what's happened there as uh, Mike Jones Scott, is the only rider that... Scott Lars. I think there's something going on with Scott Lars out there as well, so it looks like they've got Mike Jones's bike running now. Um, he's coming in, he's, uh, he's had enough of this one, but uh, look at the number 67. That will put Brian, Brian Starry up to fourth position. Glenn Allison will be now up to fifth, and the good news is that's more points for Troy Herfoss as well too, Steve, yeah. because he will now be up to seventh place and should just hang on to that championship lead as they come towards the end of this race. His position stay the same. What is that, 275 to 268 at the moment? Uh, your live championship in the bottom uh, right-hand corner of the screen there. But Glenn Allison is not done with Brian Starring just yet in that battle for fourth position. Well, four out of four of the Victorian championships. He will not want to finish off the podium here this weekend. So Glenn Allison will be giving it everything he's got to try and get past Starring to at least salvage a fourth position. Well, all the reports coming out of that Victorian championship meeting was yes, Glenn Allerton was dominant over the races, but the big news was Max Stouffer and how he was riding, and Max Stouffer is now on track with only a very short distance to go, a lap and a half in fact, at looking at his first ever podium in the Alpine Star Al category. Allerton up the inside. Brock Pearson is not out of this one as well in that battle for fourth position on board the Desmo Sport Ducati. The man that started from pole position is doing a great job to hang on to the back of these multi-time Australian champions, Glenn Allerton and Brian Starring. What a ride by Max Stauffer. Waters is not out of this equation either. He is now hunting down Crew Halliday on the last lap. It was uh, Josh Waters half a second faster than Crew Halliday. I've seen him doing one arm burpees in training at F45 Mildura in the lead up to Who? this race, Steve Martin. Josh Waters with a, cast, with, a, with a cast on his arm. Such is the determination to get back to full fitness and ready for this round. And he's now trying desperately to hang on to a very hard charging Crew Halliday as they come round through Yamaha Court 
corner to get the last lap board steep. There's only one 4.45 kilometre lap to go in this race and Halliday leads over Josh Waters about half a second into the gap but we've only got 12 corners to go to decide who's going to take this race win. This is a massive lap for Crew Halliday. He needs this. He needs this win. He is doing everything he can. He's got the, the winningest rider in uh, recent history right behind him at this circuit and I tell you what, Waters knows that he needs that extra five points and he's closed the gap down now. Waters is in with a shot as they head around. He's going to line himself up. There's an opportunity into Honda Corner. But once again, Halliday takes the inside line. Well, Waters. Halliday's good on the brakes. Remember, Waters has got a wrist injury. He doesn't want to try and put too much pressure through it. Will Waters use the speed off turn 12 of that uh, McMartin prepared V4R machine as they come round through that final corner. He's happy just to sit back there at the moment as they make their way through Dunlop Corner and start the run up towards the hill. We go through... Uh, Yamaha corner and up towards the top of Ducati there and is the Ducati just playing a little bit of cat and mouse at the moment. Crew Halliday doesn't care. He set sail for the finish now. He wants desperately to take his first win since Morgan Park. This is uh, and that's what not a Morgan race. Park last round. That's no. Morgan Park five years ago. He holds it together now as they head through Pirelli corner. Flick over to the Michelin corner now. Nice and tight out of there. We've heard how important it is to get the drive. He's got the drive. He's got the gap. And look at the rear wheel sliding on the number 21 as they head through Yamaha corner. Turn 12. Waters can't do it from here. Crew Halliday is going to take the win. He comes out onto the straight. Waters pulls into the slipstream. Tries desperately to take the win, but it is Crew Halliday. Crew Halliday takes the win. On board bike number 65. You can see the emotion underneath that dark visor of his helmet as they came across the line. Max Stouffer takes an excellent third position. His first ever in an Australian Superbike Championship race on board the GTR Motorstars machine. And Glenn Allerton eventually takes fourth place by 0.2 of a second over Brian starring in fifth. Our pulse sitter Brock Hearson rounds out the top six. And Troy Herfoss, in the end, after that moment at, uh, at turn one, Steve, was only 14 seconds behind the race win and takes very, very important points for seventh in that race. But congratulations to that man, Max Stouffer. His first podium. He's arrived in the Alpine Star Superbike category and that has now been confirmed. Wow, what a ride by Max Stouffer and Crew Halliday. Waters, I mean, all of these guys have reasons to be happy. And I'm pretty sure that all of the riders will be happy with uh, Max's performances too. Uh, a much-liked character in the uh, in the paddock. And of course, his dad, a multiple-time Australian champion, two-time Australian Superbike champion, two-time Australian Supersport champion. He did the double Yamaha uh, for Supersport and Superbike back in 2006, and Max has done a great job. But Crew Halliday, you cannot say that is a uh, an unwarranted win. He's been so close so many times this year. He takes the win by 0 .077 of a second over Josh Waters, Max Stouffer in third, Allerton fourth, Brian Starring in fifth, and Brock Pearson rounds out the top six. Wow, Troy Herfoss, how important are those points that he takes for seventh position, Steve? Because I think he may just hang on to that championship lead after running off at turn one. Unbelievable. Yeah, he got uh, super lucky there that, uh, I mean, let's face it, this was a mixed up race to what we normally see, isn't it? Who would have predicted that podium? An incredible race by Max Stouffer, your first ever superbike podium. All the hard work is paying off and your dad was biting his nails in your garage. I can't believe it. Um, like, it's so unbelievable. I was fading quite a lot towards the end of the race. Um, the tyre drop-off was so much more than I expected, but I think everyone was pretty much dealing with the same issues. So, you know, I was just trying to manage Manu did as best as I could, then Mike crashed, and I was like, I'm on. This is, this is my time. So I got lucky, but... I'm here, so I'm so so thankful to my whole team and everyone who's got me here. I can't I can't believe it. Well, let's take that momentum into the next race. We'll see you then. For sure, thank you. Excellent. Okay, and in P2, Josh Waters, um, another podium. Such important points for you in the championship. A great start, and you put the pressure on Crew, but he just took it. Yeah, it was uh, it was great. So huge thanks to my team, like like always. Uh, I let the team down then, so I just, yeah. Like I said to you, I think earlier yesterday, four weeks ago, this my right hand didn't work, so I'm bloody wrapped that, yeah. I got one more to go today. Yeah, okay, you go and rest, I think. Okay, and in P1, Crew Halliday on the Yamaha, 
an incredible win. It must be so emotional for you, your first for the season, um, and a very important win for you as well. Yeah, thanks, Kate. Uh, you know, it's, it was a bit of a strange race. I got off the start quite well, and, you know, I know young little Maxi Stauff is riding quite well, and he's quite hard to pass because he's pretty fast in that last sector. So, you know, I had to try to find a way to get past him, but, you know, I ended up get, getting it done. And, you know, when I seen Mike get past Josh, and Josh ran a little bit wide and turned fourth, I thought, there's my chance to go with Mike. And, uh, I know Josh a little bit injured, so I was like, oh, maybe we can try to get away. And we sort of did, but then Mike crashed, so I made a mistake. Then Josh is on me. Was, the last three laps was, was hard. And, um, you know, I just spoke to Josh, and we both run out of grip, um, and it's very physical on the body. So, you know, I can't say enough for the team. They've done an amazing job all weekend. Uh, probably Kev's, Kev's probably ripped his hair out waiting for me to get a win all these years. But, you know, I finally got one, and, uh, you know, hopefully I can get another one in the next race. OK, bring it on. We'll see you there. Thank you. Incredible performance by Maxi. What does this, what does this podium mean to you? Because um, I know there's an incredible amount of hard work that goes on behind the scenes. You've been searching for speed and just for the perfect setup for so long. What does this podium mean to the team? Oh, it's just a massive booster, you know. Like we've um, we've really been on the back foot from um, the start of last year with the uh, with the bike coming in, you know. Um, we've got different suspension to everyone else on a Yamaha. We've got different electronics. You know, so we've had to um, start from scratch, scratch with the Motec and, um, and and Max being um, the first superbike he's ever ridden, he didn't know what he needed. So it's um, it's taken a long time. Um, I've learned a lot. Max has learned a lot. The whole team's learned a lot. And um, to, um, you know, it's just awesome. Yeah. You know, it's just so good that he, you know, he can finally, we can finally put it together and, um, and um, you know, get a result. So I was in the um, control tower before and there was actually a lot of emotional people in there saying that they remember when Maxi was little and he was cruising around with that little tube up his nose, you know, working through leukaemia um, and they were just so, so thrilled yeah. that that this is how far he's come. Yeah, that's right. I mean, Max has spent his whole life in, in this paddock. Um, you know, he, he's, he was first he was only, you know, a month old at his first ASBK meeting. So, He's been here, everyone knows him, um, and, um, you know, he's, he'd have to be the biggest chatterbox in the in the paddock. He, he's never in our box. He's always talking to everyone else. So, um, you know, uh, yeah, it's just great to see. He's, uh, he's, he works really hard, him and um, Cam, Dunker, they... They they work hard every day. They you know they they go to the gym together. They ride together. They you know um, they're like brothers really. And um, and you know they, they've been just putting in a lot of effort and and it shows. Yeah, a hundred percent. Well, we wish you the best of luck in the next race, Jamie. Yep. Thank you. Pearson, of course, is on pole position. He's got a lot to play for. Josh Waters, he just needs to finish this one. Mike Jones in third. Well, he needs a win after that DNF. Crew Halliday, he'd love another win. Max Stauffer, another podium perhaps. Troy Herfoss, he needs to get himself closer to the top. Look at the stars on the third row of the grid. Brian Starring, Glenn Allerton and Anthony West. None of those guys need any introduction to Australian road racing fans. And back on row four, we've got Ted Collins on the Lipson BMW. Jed Metcher and Mark Chiodo having his first race here in the championship since February this year at this very circuit. Arthur CC's Tom Taparis and Paris Hardwick on row five. Row six is Josh Sutherland, Scott Alars and Michael Kemp in 18. Yeah, I don't think we'll see Tom Taparis on the grid there after that crash in Super Sport, so there will be a vacant grid position on uh, row number five in position number 14, but take nothing away from the efforts of Crew Halliday in race number one. That first race win for 2,254 days. He probably won't like me reminding him of that, but it just shows you that sometimes you've just got to do your time and wait out, and the luck will eventually turn your way. Cruz had a lot of bad luck this year, but in race one, he had some good luck. The common theme is never give up and don't stop fighting. That's exactly right. That's exactly what Crew Halliday's done. That's exactly what Josh Waters and Troy Herfoss will be thinking of as we get ready now for Alpine Stars Superbike race number two. 
from Phillip Island, spiritual home of Australian motorcycle racing as Sam Phillips leads the front of the grid. We're ready to go. We're away to the bike. Ah, oh, no, good start from Cross Waters. Rock Pearson didn't get the best of starts, just like this race number one, and he'll be swamped as they make their way down towards turn one, the Motel Corner for the first time, and it is Waters that leads. Max Snaper's got another cracking start, Steve. He's up into second place. He's on fire this weekend, is Max, and Brock Pearson slots into third. Allerton's got a cracking start in fourth place, and Crew Halliday has got another great start. He's up into fifth. Yeah, good start there by Crew Halliday, but uh, look at Maxi Stauffer. He's certainly got those starts wide. We expect to see the man up front, Josh Waters, leading the way. But Maxi Stauffer has put himself in another good spot. But the pole man in third, that's where he needs to be. Allerton better too. That's Bit of a all bubble. changed from race number one, isn't it? That uh, Pearson didn't get the start he has in this one. Tell you what, there was a bit of a bubble there from um, Glenn Allerton as well. So he's pushing on nice and hard early on. Just to see where uh, Troy Herfoss is. There he is as they make their way up the hill. Sitting a little bit further back in the pack than he would have liked. I think he was behind Brian Starring on the Moto Go Yamaha. Herfoss was looking a little bit flustered, to be honest, when we looked at him in that interview there. Let's hope that he can hold it together, take a deep breath, stay calm, work his way forward in this one. The start for him, not great in eighth position. But also, too, the big news this weekend is that Brock Pearson is on board the brand new 2023 model uh, Ducati uh, V4R that was uh, first raced at uh, the Darwin round by McMartin racing rider Josh Waters. So good to see that the uh, Desmo Sport Ducati machine is out there on the, uh, the latest update. It has a different gearbox, which apparently is much better for racing, especially here at Phillip Island as the uh, pretty healthy crowd this weekend have been enjoying some great racing, watching the bikes make their way down the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance start finish straight for the first time, the completion of the first lap, 299 kilometres an hour for our race leader, Josh Waters, for Glenn Allerton on the BMW, 300 kilometres an hour, and Mike Jones, 304, Crew Holiday, 305 kilometres an hour, with the aid of the slipstream back in the pack. Yeah, absolutely. Um, top speeds are right up there. The wind is nice and low. A little bit uh, warm on the asphalt there. Perfect conditions for going racing. Uh, good grip from these tyres when they're new. But I tell you what, a little bit later into this race, when we get to about lap seven, uh, these bikes are going to be moving around a lot. And we've got, just in the background there, one of the Honda riders has uh, run wide. Could be uh, Mark Kyoto, perhaps. Let's wait and see. Yeah, got it all wrong on the run into... Uh, into Arthur Cece's and Mark Kyoto must have had it coming together because... Uh, yeah, on the yeah. breaks into turn four, Mark Kyoto was forced to go around the long lap penalty loop from uh, MotoGP last weekend, but safely back on track is Mark Kyoto. And up the inside goes Mike Jones. He loves that overtaking spot and uh, says thank you very much. It's because he's smooth right, he so just flows across the top of, uh, of Lukey Heights and then down into Pirelli Corner, turn 10, and just seems to slide up the inside with uh, consummate ease as he now sets sail and tries to uh, find his way past the very rapid this weekend, Max Stouffer. Here we go, an AMX Superstore's replay. That corner was set up virtually at the hay ship, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. He got the drive, he got halfway past by the top of the hill, and uh, he's just perfect. That's a perfect position for him. He's so smooth. And he can carry more speed into the middle of the corner, but uh, we saw him risk that too much in the race earlier today where he crashed. First, fastest man on the first flying lap, a 132.24. Mike Jones sitting back in uh, second position. He was in third, but uh, he's now up into second, getting the better of Max Stouffer as they came down the My Bike Motorcycle and Shirt start finish straight. So Jones up into second place, a 32.6 it was from uh, Waters. So four tenths of a second faster for uh, Jones on that last lap. Max Stouffer at 32.9, a 33.0 for uh, Brock Pierce and also 33.0 for Clue Halliday, who once again is just working himself into this one. Yeah, up the hill they go again through the Dunlop corner. About a second gap there to Mike Jones. Um, Stouffer in third. Wouldn't he love to get another podium? You know what I think is going to happen here? I think that Josh Waters is going to try as hard as he can. But I just remember back to the Bend Motorsport Park last year when Mike Jones won the race in the first, uh, won the championship in the first race, and then essentially was like a dog that had been let off the chain in the final race of the year and completely dominated the race. I feel that with Mike Jones' teammate, Crew Halliday, taking the race win earlier this year, and Jones, the defending champion, unable to uh, taste the champagne victory from the top step of the podium at any race this year. This could be Jones absolutely riding like he was last year with his air on fire. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, I like the look of Halliday sitting back there at the moment too. I mean, like, there he goes. Halliday's up the inside. Looks like he's going to make another 
place, as does um, Herfoss. Herfoss on the charge up the inside of Allerton, down into Motor Corner turn one. And there goes Crew Halliday. Uh, the start is under investigation too, so let's hope that none of the major players have uh, jumped the start. We'll have to wait and see. Looks like it's Mark Kyoto. Um, who's got a jump start penalty of 10 seconds. So well, you can uh, also add that to his long lap penalty that he took voluntarily yep. <laughs> at turn four. So uh, Mark Yodo will be going back 10 seconds at the, uh, the end of this race. They come round now onto the start finish straight. It looks like Jones and Halliday. Halliday on the fast on the last lap was 0.3 faster than Waters and 0.2 faster than Jones. And he's right now with them as they come onto the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance start finish straight. And it's about this time in race number one where he also made his presence felt. And there goes Halliday up the inside on Mike Jones. Makes the move. Nice clean move. Halliday has got a brilliant line out of the final corner, the Yamaha corner. Um, he gives him good drive and good speed down the straight. An extra couple of kilometres an hour, which makes it easier, obviously, to park guy, pass guys like Mike Jones. Um, he really does have a good line there. And we know how fast Mike Jones is rolling into turn one, Mogul Corner as well. So that's uh, pretty exceptional from Crew Halliday. He's done it now in two races. Actually, he did it three times, uh, twice in, in race number one, didn't he? Because he had to get into the lead, then he had to retake the lead from Mike Jones as well. Her Max Stouffer still doing a fantastic job here to hold off Brock Pearson and Troy Herfoss. Yeah, Herfoss needs to get a little bit inventive there. I reckon the guys in front now are starting to hold him up a little bit. But, uh, I mean, let's face it, his confidence is a little bit shot at the moment. When was the last time you heard Herfoss go into a race almost admitting that he can't win at Phillip Island? That's pretty much what he said in that pre-race interview. But uh, he's gritting it out. He's doing what he can do. Uh, good to see and of course he's had a couple of moments here and there so he doesn't want to do anything stupid he knows that whatever move he makes and I think he's just made one in the background has got to count looks like he just went up the inside of uh, Brock Pearson well, is that a, a very Troy Herfoss esque corner, isn't it? Total commitment across the top, and then late, late, late on the brakes down into turn four. You picked it, Steve. He's done it absolutely perfectly. Got the better of Brock Pearson. You know, the other thing that's really excited me about this weekend, for the first time in as long as I can ever remember, we've got four experienced campaigners in the Australian Superbike Championship battling at the front, but we've got the young blood, the new riders, Brock Pearson and Max Stouffer, both of them in their second year in the championship, up there challenging the nation's best and doing a great job with it as well. It's good to see, but I don't think Herfoss is as happy as you are at the moment because he's battling with both of them and they're making his life very, very hard. But uh, this is a much better ride for Troy Herfoss in race one. Um, that Penrite Honda, uh, he's, he's, he's right there. If he'd had a better start, he would have been up with the, the front three for sure. So, um, now he's just going to try and see what he can do with Max Stauffer. But uh, we know Max, he's getting faster lap by lap um, on that uh, GYT Yamaha. Well, two-thirds race distance, perfect opportunity for another update from Kate. Yeah, just in the lane here, we've got Bishop Motorsport Manager for Yamaha. Your boys, um, Crew Halliday and Mike Jones, are chasing pretty hard on Josh. Um, is there more in it for them? Is there, is, can they continue to put this pressure on? Oh, I think so. Crew's proven that he's uh, quite quick here in the past and certainly motivated after that race one to get up there and, and do the job. He knows the overall win is in this race. He wins that race, he wins today. So there's plenty of motivation there for him and uh, I think he'll work hard to get that done. Yeah, and Mike Jones, of course, um, how do you think he's going coming in? Obviously, last race wasn't to, uh, didn't go his direction. Oh, no, look, any time you fall off, you're not happy, are you? So, obviously, that's motivation for him. He, he wants to get there and redeem himself. So, uh, well, we've got three laps left to go, and I'm sure they'll go all the way to the end. Yeah, excellent. Okay, thanks, Bish. Thanks, Kate. Back to you, boys. Do you see that line that um, he takes there, Crew Halliday? He, he drifts out wide, and it looks like he actually loses. A bit uh, on the entry, doesn't he? He does, but then he straightens it up and gets on the fat part of the tyre, drives it all the way down the straight. And, and Jones, who was right behind him, is now uh, considerable uh, bike lengths behind as they made their way down into motor corner turn one. He made up a couple of his uh, bike lengths on the uh, side waters as well. But waters is wide. Been, waters was a fraction wide. Halliday was right on the inside curb. And I thought there may have been a chance he could, could possibly drive up the inside. But we're at uh, the point now where it's getting down to the business end. If Josh Waters is hurting, he's really going to be feeling that about now. And he's also going to be feeling the pressure coming from behind from both Crew Halliday and Mike Jones. 
But the other thing that's interesting me is the lap times have been pretty consistent. Still in that uh, mid 33s where they have been, Steve, for probably about the, the last uh, four or five laps. So that A1126 tyre is obviously doing a pretty good job. Yeah, I'd say that they're all feeling a little bit greasy out there, though. So it's all going to be about the setup that they've done in the last few days. And there is your championship lead if it was to stay like this. Waters would take it away with 293 leading into the final round with Herfoss in second. And, and in all honesty, it can't get any better for Troy Herfoss unless one of these riders falls off because that gap for Troy Herfoss to try and make up to this podium battle is uh, probably just too much with the amount of like, laps that we have left. He's managed to dispose of both uh, Max Stopher and also Brock Pearce, and he's up into fourth place. And I'm pretty sure that if you had a said to Troy Herfoss at the beginning of this race, you'll finish in fourth, as we see that line from Crew Halliday once again through turn 12, the Yamaha corner, and out onto the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance start finish straight. Troy Herfoss would have been more than happy to take fourth place. But if they do finish in this order, Josh Waters will go to the final round of the championship at the Ben Motorsport Park in South Australia, leading the championship by one solitary point. The only thing that you've forgotten about is the next two laps, because a lot's going to happen in between these Yamahas and Josh Waters. I mean, I can't see the crew Halliday's caught all the way to the back. He's not going to have a go. But in saying that, crew Halliday looks like he's lost a lot of grip now from the back. You can see the bike spinning up a lot. And also the fact, too, that Josh Waters was upset, I think, this morning in race number one when he finished in second. He claimed that he let the team down. I don't think that's the case personally, but Josh Waters seems to think it is. He's going to put in everything he can as Pearson tries to go up the inside of Max Dover at turn four. Can't get the job done. Max has got the better line coming into uh, the bottom end of the Where's second there at Dunlop. Fox? Where's her fault? Ahead of them. Okay. There he is there on track. He's yep. managed to pull a bit of a gap on these two as they uh, battle for uh, youngster supremacy. Yeah, well, the lap times that Herfoss do is doing at the moment, pretty impressive. Yeah, 33.6. He's actually faster than what uh, Crew Halliday well, and Halliday. also Mike Jones was on the last lap. Yeah, all of the ones in front. In fact, 34.0 was Crew Halliday. That was a pretty slow lap. This has been a yo-yo lap for Crew Halliday because he's been uh, dropping off the back of Waters. Now he's closed right up onto the back of him as he comes around through uh, Yamaha Corner. We will come round to get the last lap board, Steve Martin. So there's only 4.45 kilometres to yeah. go. Waters holds on to the lead. Crew Halliday is charging hard. Mike Jones, I don't think, has got the pace of Crew Halliday. The question is, can Halliday get past Josh Waters, who is now just gritting the teeth and holding on for everything that he possibly can to try and take this race win and a one-point chance lead to tail and bend. Yeah, I don't think that Halliday's got the grip. It's going to be a pretty desperate manoeuvre down into the Honda corner if he does try anything. But uh, I, I just think that it looks like Waters has uh, got this one. Has he done the perfect tyre conservation ride from Josh Waters on board that Mick Martin Racing with K-Tech Panigale V4R? The bike that's prepared in the northern suburbs of Sydney in Craig Mick Martin's garage. The all-volunteer team, they're our privateer team. They're not factory-backed. And they're doing a great job here with uh, Josh Waters leading now with only a couple of corners to go. You can see the determination through Josh Waters' visor as he exits Dunlop Corner and sets sail for home now. He's got a good lead as they go up towards the top of the hill and head towards uh, the Ducati Corner. And that's where this race could be decided if Crew Halliday can get a good run through there and possibly, possibly get close enough to put a move on the brakes. Well, he's uh, running out of options now. It's got to be at the bottom of the hill if he can do anything, but he's too far back. He can't dive up the inside. He's not going to have a go there. Waters is too good. Waters has got to be feeling the pain, but he's right on the back wheel now. But Waters is good out of this one. Turn 11, the Michelin corner. Crew's got good drive. We know how good Crew is into this final corner. Can he just get right on there. He's gone in nice and wide but Waters, he's not going to make a mistake from here. Waters comes around through the final corner. Crew Halliday into his slipstream. He tries his best to try and get the slipstream but the Ducati punches out and will, will sail across the line and take the race win. Josh Waters, you can see how happy he is with that. Crew Halliday takes second. Mike Jones in third. Coming to the line, it will be Troy Herfoss that takes fourth position and uh, good championship points setting up a championship battle at the Ben Motorsport Park like we've never seen before. Uh, Max Stouffer in fifth, Brock Pearson in sixth, Brian Starring will take seventh place. Another great ride from the Moto Go Yamaha rider, Glenn Allerton eighth on the GT BMW, Ant West in ninth, and Ted Collins will round out the top ten on the Lindsay Racing BMW. Wow, what a ride! And you can see there Josh Waters and Troy Herfoss, the two injured warriors, just tapping each other on the shoulder and saying, "Well done, what a ride." Yeah, good to see, isn't it? I mean, wouldn't you think the injuries that these two guys have had in the last um, uh, couple of months? I mean, it's incredible. It's tough to find back to June.
there was tension that you could cut with a knife in Darwin between the two of them. And uh, now they're congratulating each other after uh, unbelievable performances all weekend. Both of them riding, well, we know, a little bit injured. Josh Waters takes that race win by 0.224 of a second over Crew Halliday. Mike Jones in third. Great to see him bounce back from the disappointment in race one with a podium. Herfoss in fourth, Stouffer fifth, Pearson sixth, Starring seven, Allerton eight, West ninth, and Ted Collins rounds out the top ten. Good ride for Jed Matry, hasn't done much of the championship in 11th, 12th after CC's. Mark Kyoto after that uh, jump start down in 13th position, 14th Josh, Josh Sutherland, Paris Hardwick, a good ride from him in 15th, and Michael Kemp in 16th, the uh, South Australian. Kate, probably plenty of excitement down there with your top three. Oh, so much excitement down here. Thanks, Phil. In P3, Mike Jones, a bit of redemption from, from race one. How was it out there? Yeah, it was a pretty tough race. Like, the start wasn't very good, uh, to be honest, and uh, I had enough pace to close the gap back down to Waters. But um, once I got there, I really just sat in behind him, thinking that I'd be able to just follow him towards the end and have a bit of a go. But, um, you know, Crew was coming and he came past me. Again, just sort of sat in behind him. But uh, as the race went on and got in that last couple of laps where I thought I might have been able to have a bit of a chance to, um, you know, have a go at second or, or first position, I just really had a tyre and uh, struggled to really push past that and, and be able to capitalise. So, um, yeah, third place in the in the race today. Yeah, well, we'll see you at the bend. Cheers. Yeah. We'll see you there. OK, and in P2, Crew Halliday. Uh, a pretty excellent weekend for you. Two podiums. You put the pressure on Josh, but you just couldn't quite get there. Yeah, you know, I think I dicked around a little bit at the start of that race. Uh, I don't know, Mike just went past me like I was stopped. And, you know, I made a bit of a mistake in the first lap where I almost lost the front. and. That might have just scared me a little bit and yeah, it just took me a little bit while to get past Glenn, then I had to get past Brock and then I had to get past Max and I had to get past Mike. I'm like, don't make it easy for yourself. So but you know what, honestly I think if I got past Josh, I think I could have held him off. Um, he was a lot stronger than me and Mike in the last in the last corner and you know the power of the Ducati was hurting us down the first straight, but then it seemed like we'll catch him the back end of the circuit. So I was hoping I could try get him going into four, but yeah, easy said than done with racing against that bike, but you know, we, we've beaten him before. I'm not blaming who's got a faster bike, it's just Josh rode really defensive and really good. So hats off to that team, and I can't thank my team enough. They've, they've done an outstanding job all weekend. Uh, a little bit on the back foot qualifying on the second row, which I didn't really. I went home yesterday and I was pretty angry, so I think I used to use that aggression in to today's two races. Well, it was a great day for you, so congratulations. We'll see you at the bend. Thanks, Kate. And in P1. Congratulations, Josh Waters. You had an absolute warrior effort for you. How is your wrist? How was that race? It bloody hurt. <laughs> um, yeah, huge thanks to everyone that's helped me. And then, yeah, big thanks to the team. So now it goes to the final round and um, try my artist. You are leading this championship. You can go and celebrate now, but don't go too hard because you might need to rest that wrist. Uh, thank you. Thanks. All right. Well done, Josh. Thanks, boys. Well, thanks very much, Kate. He leads the championship on paper, but not by any points. Uh, Josh Waters and Troy Herfoss are both tied for the lead, heading into the last round. 226 for Glenn Allerton in third, and 222 for Crew Halliday in fourth. Third place is certainly up for grabs as we head to the Bend Motorsport Park at the beginning of December. Mike Jones in fifth, Brian Starring in sixth, Brock Pearson in seventh, Ted Collins eighth, Arthur Cece's in nine, and Max Stouffer rounds out the top ten in his debut year. Well, we're coming up to the final round of the championship, the Ben Motorsport Park, the 1st and the 3rd of December, with our two championship protagonists tied on points. It cannot get any better for the final round of the 2023 My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championship presented by Motul. We can't wait to get to the Ben Motorsport Park. We'll see you there.